Hey, hi, hello, how are you? I'm P and today I'm going to be doing my top 10 reads of 2018. It was really, really hard to decide. I read over 100 books this year and definitely think I probably missed some or the order is maybe not the best, but these are some of my favorites. All of them I believe are five stars. I will be doing a 2018 wrap up of every single book that I read in 2018. Um, so that will be coming sometime. So the last few books are like the 10 through mid range are tentatively in the right order. Coming in at number 10 is The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. I loved this book. Oh my god, I just hit myself. <laughs> Hello? Who just fell? Dan! Mr. Humphrey, you need to chill. This is a companion novel to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Wow, I am terrible at talking. <laughs> this centers around a girl named Molly who has um, anxiety and identifies as fat and she has had like 26 crushes but she's never done anything about them so she's never actually had a boyfriend and um she enlists well kind of <laughs> enlists the help of her twin sister casey cat cassie that was close cassie um and cassie's girlfriend to help her out and there are two possible love interests and she's kind of deciding between the two while also having family things going on obviously tabbed the crap out of this book and it was just so so great and I I really liked it I really identified with it definitely was super cute super relatable and super well um, researched I think Becky yeah, Albertalli writes really really great books and um, especially the representation for anxiety was really good and it also shed some positive light on um, um, medication for anxiety which was really nice so yeah I really love this book that's why it's on this list. <laughs> Number nine is Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. This um, was my first time reading this book and I loved it so much. It It's a classic. It's fantastic. That rhymed. <laughs> finished the series this year and I cannot wait to read the rest. I'm finally catching up on series that I missed out on when I was a kid. This did not disappoint whatsoever so... I loved it so much. The next up coming in at number eight is Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a actual um, recent read. It tells the story of Sadie who after her sister goes missing and winds up dead, um, Sadie herself um, leaves home to try and um, avenge her sister's death. Um, it's a dual perspective of Sadie and also this like podcast which is kind of reporting on what's happening while she's gone and interviewing her family. The audiobook is amazing for this. It is a really good thriller. The audiobook is full cast and um, I listen to the audiobook personally and I thought this was one of the best reads ever and one of the best releases of um, 2018 <laughs> and it really just blew everything else out of the water and I read this pretty late in the year. Trigger warning for sexual assault, abuse. It's really gritty. Definitely check out Goodreads for more uh, or trigger warnings because I uh, may not be the best of this because I read it a while ago. <laughs> Number seven is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I, again, read this series this year and I'm obsessed. I love the Mortal Instruments. I have only two of the books, but I've been listening to the audiobooks all year and I flip and love this series. I love these books. I'm so glad I finally decided to bite the bullet and like attack this six book series. We we're hesitant going into it knowing that there are so many books in the universe and Cassandra Clare just keeps putting out so many. Um, I definitely recommend checking them out because they're very fast reads. They're very, very gripping, very exciting. You won't be disappointed, so. Number six you probably won't be surprised about and that is The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. I I'm gonna say I love this book so much today. I love this book. <laughs> it's one of my favorite books of all time. I just think this is a timeless classic. It's definitely one of my all-time favorite classics and I just love the message and the themes that are present and it's just one of my favorite books and I love it so much. <laughs> Number five is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I did some research into Sylvia Plath for my history class sophomore year and I just found her quite interesting and I um, read some of her works and I got really excited because I love her writing so I decided to pick up her novel. It did not disappoint. It has asylum -y elements. It's kind of um, autobiographical for her as it does deal with a lot of depression and um, as I said asylum 
and um, it's really interesting, especially since it was written in 19... the 1950s, I believe. Yeah, it just really delves into the human mind and insanity and what's real and what's not, and um, I really liked it, <laughs> obviously. Um, and again, it's one of my favorite books, definitely one of my favorite classics. The next book I have here is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I... I read this during the contemporary thon and I finally like fucked up the courage to read it and I'm so so happy I did. This has amazing anxiety rep and uh, for panic attacks and OCD and I loved this story so much. It was so raw, the characters were so so good. I think John Green does an amazing job at making characters that um, are teenagers but they're believable, like he doesn't dumb them down which I think is kind of common in some young adult because they are written by adults and um, I love this. It's so close to my heart. Um, I obviously tabbed it. A lot of these I've tabbed because I love them or I will reread them and tab them probably. I've read it at a great time. Highly recommend um, reading it. It is a heavier read so if you do deal with some of the things, um, it was way better for me that I did put this off to where I was at a better place in my mental health journey read this and that sounded really fucking weird but you know. Number three is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan. Or you can tell by this list I love reading about mental health because I do deal with it on a daily basis obviously. <laughs> this was just a fantastic debut. It really is accurately like created and um, I just like cannot believe that this exists and that it's a debut. Um, this is a beautiful um, journey about a girl dealing with the suicide of her mother as um, she is now going to meet her family in Thailand and she believes that her mother has transformed into a bird. Hey, so this is editing Pia coming in to say that I forgot about one of the most amazing books of all time in all the history of books and especially books that I've read and that is The Hate You Give. I cannot believe that I forgot to put this on my list. I didn't have it in my room so like I just like out of sight out of mind, I don't know. I just completely forgot about it. I already, I know this is 10 but it's kind of 11 because that is like just the best book like ever so yeah needed to mention that I hope that if you've seen all my videos and you realize that I saw that and it didn't make it on this list and you're like wow she's a terrible person I'm not I'm just stupid okay <laughs> the last two books are two of my favorite books like ever number two is Anne of Green Gables by Ella Montgomery this kind of came out of nowhere for me I started um, watching Anne with an E this year and I just found the story so incredibly inspiring. It really helped me to kind of push myself beyond like what I thought I was capable of. It made me like so open to my imagination and just so inspired to write and so uh, incredibly inspired to like open up my creativity and to really kind of like be myself and a lot of cheesy stuff like that. But it really, really has a special place in my heart and I will forever love this story and it also means so much to me that I did um, consume this story when I was a kid and it just brings back so many good memories. But I never read it <laughs> until this year and now it is like literally one of my favorite books. It just makes me so happy and makes me super inspired to create. I don't know. <laughs> and then number one for my all-time favorite book, I don't know if this will come as a surprise to anyone. You've been watching my videos for about a year now. Um, you would have seen my January wrap up and I read this book in January <laughs> and it has remained my favorite book ever <laughs> and I love it so much. I have so much to say. <laughs> but I have like nothing to say because I haven't read it in <laughs> That is All the Right Places by Jennifer Niven. This book, I read it at an incredibly crucial time for me and it was probably the best time I could have ever read it. I was dealing with so much and my depression was kind of at its worst and this is a very heavy book but it's so beautiful. Jennifer Niven's writing is gorgeous and I love her style and I love the way she handles mental health. This is kind of a love story dealing with um, bipolar disorder, depression, suicide, PTSD, car accidents, so much like loss and um, kind of these two people coming together and like leaning on one another to um, kind of try to get back to normal and just kind of become better themselves. I don't know, there's a lot of controversial things about this book. A lot of people think it's kind of saying, you know, depression can be solved with a romance or with a significant other or whatever, but um, to me it just kind of felt like, you know, there are other people who can understand you and you can kind of uh, relate to them and that would really help because you feel like you're not alone and just related so much to the, <laughs> the character Finch that 
and especially at this time and I just thought saw it as a you know like he's so close to what I'm experiencing his um mind is so similar to mine but you know we don't have to have the same ending <laughs> it means so much to me I flipping love this book okay I'm gonna go cry now so anyways that is all for this video like comment subscribe do all the things and I will see you in my next one bye